Good morning dear friends praise the lord for this wonderful new day every morning his mercies are new and great is his faithfulness it is because of his faithfulness and love we are given this new day to live for him and serve him and i pray that today's meditation shall enlighten us further concerning the uniqueness of jesus we are considering this based on the gospel according to st john chapter 18 verses 1 to 11 the uniqueness of jesus and we started uh, by this statement every circumstance in which jesus was placed became an occasion of a further revelation concerning his heavenly character and so in this heavenly character jesus christ was certainly unique and so what are these revelation that we found number one habit of prayer and the number two the um, his knowledge of the future all the source of his knowledge of the future or anything else was the scriptures and so we close to by this sentence make sure that you possess a scriptural knowledge of the future because bible gives us a complete revelation concerning your future my future the devil's future and the church's future and uh, the nation's future it's it's all there my friends and by this understanding you can discern the signs of a time and for this you read second peter chapter 3 verses 7 to 13 i once again encourage you to read these references after the meditation second peter chapter 3 verses 7 to 13 now the third revelation we find is a his confession of himself verse 5 his confession of himself now this you need to listen very carefully what was his confession those who came with judas iscariot to arrest him in that particular garden of gethsemane because judas iscariot knew that uh, this would be the place jesus could be found because Jesus often resort to this place with his disciples to pray. And this is the place where he spent many times of prayer. And so they came and uh, Jesus came forward and asked them, "Whom are you searching for? Looking for?" And they said, "We are looking for the man called Jesus." And what was his confession? I am he. Now it is very important. Listen very carefully. Those who came to Jesus to seize him declared that they were looking for Jesus. And what is the significance of his confession when he said I am he? What is the significance at that moment? Presently reproach was associated with that name and he willingly accepted and bears it that reproach attached to that name it was as if they said where is that despised man and rejected man where is he and he answered he answered i am he to the samaritan woman to the blind who was healed by him and uh, he was thrown out of the synagogue that blind man out of the synagogue he was cast out 
according to chapter 9 of the gospel according to St. John. He said to all these characters in the Bible, I am he. To the Samaritan woman he said the same thing. And when the Samaritan woman said, we know that when Messiah come, he is going to teach us and then we will know the truth. And to that Jesus said, I am he. Ultimately, it is with him all have to do. To those who seek him through hate and reproach, his answer is, I am he. Are you willing to confess before others, I am one of his disciples? one of his followers? Or are we like Peter? I don't. Peter thought he had the boldness and he had the determination to go with Jesus and even die and even go to prison. That's what he thought of himself. But then Jesus told him, you are going to betray me or deny me three times before the cock crow twice and when it happened then Peter's eyes were open but let me ask you this question again my friends who are listening to me the name of Jesus at that time was a reproach name rejected name among the religious leaders and the scholars and doctors of the law. And he was never, never ashamed to accept it and bear that. For whose sake? For your sake and my sake. Moses chose to be mistreated and be reproached as a slave. And Jesus himself told us that those who are ashamed of my name and ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of them before the angels. And therefore, Jesus is saying that I who have suffered reproach and rejection and not yet ashamed for your sake only, not for my sake, but for your sake, are you willing to suffer the reproach and the shame of the cross and confess boldly before anyone who may question you that yes, I am a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus of Nazareth. Let that boldness and determination control your life and that you shall never, never deny Jesus Christ but on the other hand, publicly confess his name to be yours. And the fourth revelation concerning him was, is his love for his own. Verse 8. Who were his own? The disciples and those who followed him. Jesus was not a hireling. Consider his circumstance now. Power of darkness is falling all around him. His own sheep he saw defenseless. The disciples. Hell with all its forces coming against him. His words to those who came to arrest him. If it is I whom you are looking for, then let these others go free. 
the care and the love he had for his disciples and in the 13th chapter of the gospel according to st luke says those whom he loved he loved till the end and he has shown them the extent of his love for them by loving them till the end he never abandoned them he never uh, denied them even in the midst of his greatest agony he cared for them what a revelation we have of his heavenly character he would not leave them into their hands into the enemy's hands and lastly the fifth revelation we have is his submission to his father's will verse 11 now all these verse 11 verse 8 i'm saying of the gospel according to st john chapter 18 please read these passages his submission to his father's will verse 11 in his prayer in the garden of eden i mean garden of gethsemane earlier he prayed father if it be possible remove this cup that you have given me to drink remove you know there was never an occasion in his three and a half years of public life and ministry he ever prayed that kind of a prayer father it is impossible for me father it is too difficult for me help me no he never he faced all kinds of circumstances he faced demon powers so so many times he faced leprosy he faced all kinds of diseases and sicknesses he faced a demon possession and he faced hungry multitude on whom he had wonderful compassion and he faced difficult circumstances when he was insulted when he was called by all kinds of names and once even they told he is casting out demons by the chief of the demons belzebub and he was accused of uh, of an illegitimate child a son but he never never complained he never asked his father to remove this uh, this cup from me no but now he has come to the end of his life when he was about to go to the cross here is what a cup given by the father for him to drink that cup seemed for him to be too hard too bitter he cried out what was that cup by the way it was not the cross apparently it was not that or the nails or hammer or or the crown of thorns and these afflictions there is one thing that he could not even imagine going through that is separation from his father while he was hanging on the cross for 3 hours i will reserve the explanation of it on another occasion but let me tell you the separation from his father he was never separated from the father even for one minute even in his earthly life he was constantly that was why he had the spirit of prayer through prayer he was always in communication with his father he was in touch with his father in communion and fellowship he knew his father was with him always his father always heard his prayer but this time he said no and uh, what does it show my friend the next sentence he said nevertheless it is not my will but your will be done and that means 
Jesus Christ had a human will. And it was that will that cried out to Father, if it is possible, remove this cup from me. But then again, the one act of his surrender made all the difference between darkness and light for humanity. Very often I think, what would have happened to me and the entire humanity if Jesus had stopped that prayer at that, Father, remove this cup from me, and, and he didn't pray any further. What would have happened? The entire humanity would have been plunged into the abyss of darkness without any hope of salvation, without any light, or for eternal, eternal future. But thanks be to God, he did not stop that prayer there. He continued, Father, nevertheless it is not my will, but your will be done. And what was the will of his father for him? The cross, the nails, and the hammer, and the crown of thorns, and the rejection. And what does that mean? He took his human will and surrendered it to his father's will. And my friends, that is what you and I have to do. We all have our will. And we want to exercise our will. And as long as we exercise our will, God's will never can find a place in our lives. But there comes a moment in all of our lives as to what are we going to do with the will of God and our own will. Take our own will and submit it to the will of God the Father. And he always lived in submission to his father's will. And that is why you and I are enjoying the joy of salvation and the assurance of eternal life. My friends, here is the road to victory. And remember, here is the road to exaltation. He was obedient to God the Father's will. Even he was obedient to the death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also has exalted him and given him a name above all other names, that every knee shall bow and every tongue in heaven and earth and under the earth shall confess that this Jesus Christ is Lord and God. All of us enjoy exaltation. All of us enjoy rewards and crowns. But remember, there cannot be a crown without the cross. There cannot be an exaltation without going into the abyss of humiliation. Are you willing for the sake of Christ to submit your own will to the will of God? will of God for your earthly life is to live a life of self-denial in order to be exalted by God the Father. It has to be a life of utter humility and humbleness. For everyone who humbled himself shall be exalted and everyone who exalts himself shall be brought low. Which one you will choose? Let it be God's will concerning your life. And I pray that you will find what that will is by reading the scriptures. The scripture is the source of a knowledge of God's will concerning you. With this I pray that you be granted grace and to have the boldness and courage to say, Father, it is not my will, but your will must be accomplished in my life and I give myself to you to do your will. May the Lord bless you and uh, give you victory over your selfishness and self-will 
which are blocking the blessings of God in your life and ministry God bless you amen this is a great day my friends enjoy this day living for Christ in humility and in submission and in obedience and in due time remember god resist the proud but he gives grace to the humble amen